What up, class? Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History, the series where we summarize the stories of your favorite video game characters and attempt to be funny while doing it. You attempt to be funny. I'm freaking hilarious. Today, we're taking a break from the Resident Evil nonsense and going to a galaxy far, far away. Since you guys asked for it, we're talking about Starkiller and his clone, but we'll get to that later. This dude is a clone? Yeah, bro, shit's crazy. Like, this story is wild. Well, I, I'm hype. Play that intro, son. So we're sure there are a bunch of you who may not be familiar with the Star Wars lore. And we get it, that shit gets deep. But because we love you guys, here's a basic summary of what's going on in the universe. Aye, so there are the Sith and the Jedi. The Jedi are basically intergalactic samurai with control over the Force. And the Force is basically the energy of the universe. The Sith are rogue Jedi who follow the dark side of the Force. Because fuck the Paragon route, I want the cool powers. The Sith and the Jedi have been beefing for mad long, but after the fall of the Sith, the Galactic Republic was formed, which is basically a United Republic filled with multiple planets all over the galaxy. After a long time of peace, the Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic, Palpatine, is revealed to actually be the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. This is why you do a background check, people. Now look, you have a freaking terrorist in office. Darth Sidious initiates Order 66, which sets the Jedi's own soldiers against them and almost wipes them off the galaxy. So with the fall of the Jedi, Sidious forms the Galactic Empire and deems himself as Emperor. And there's your background on the Star Wars lore. Now back to Starkiller. Starkiller, born Galen Marek, begins the story in the game The Force Unleashed. We star on the planet of Kashyyyk. The Emperor's apprentice, Darth Vader, has been sent to the planet because the Empire heard that there was a Jedi in these parts. And you know the Empire can't have that. So Vader finds a Jedi named Kento Marek and bodies him, cause he's Vader. But Kento's son Galen shows up out of nowhere. Impressed by the boy's connection to the Force, Vader murders his child's dad right in front of him. They kidnap him to train him in the ways of the dark side. That's that anime bullshit. You're not my dad! For 20 years, Vader taught the boy the ways of the dark side, and sent him on multiple missions as a secret assassin. And during those 20 years, Starkiller also repressed his past, which is kinda messed up. Because of something called the Rule of Two, saying that there can only be two Sith Lords at a time, the Master and their Apprentice, Vader kept the boy a secret and gave him the codename Starkiller. After 20 years of brutal training, Vader officially deems Starkiller his apprentice. The time to overthrow Sidious is getting closer, so they might as well start making things official. However, Vader thinks that Starkiller still needs to be tested, so he sends him on a mission to kill Jedi Rom Koda, the Snatch's lightsaber. Starkiller then convenes with Proxy, this droid who's been programmed to kill him but is still kind of his friend. Then they meet with Juno Eclipse, his pilot and eventual love interest. They fly to Nar Shadda, and Starkiller confronts the old Jedi. They start the smoke, and although he puts up a really good fight, Coda's age gets the better of him, and Starkiller gains the advantage. As he's getting beat, Coda has a vision and sees that he will be a part of Starkiller's future. Our boy doesn't give a shit, so he lightsaber pokes Coda in the eye and pushes him off the platform they were falling from. But Starkiller knows that wasn't enough to kill him. He talks to Daddy Vader and gives him another Jedi to kill. This time is Kazdan Paradis, and this anime ass sensei straight tells Starkiller, I do not expect you to survive. Thanks, Sensei Vader. I, I appreciate the motivation. So team murder these Jedi, flies to Rax's prime. Starkiller rolls up to Kazdan, then bodies him. With two missions done, he talks to Vader expecting to hear about how they're gonna jump this bitch Sidious. But Vader's all like, wait, I have another test for you though. Then when Starkiller tries to argue, Vader's like, you killed an old man and an outcast, young blood. Chill. So I guess we're not gonna talk about how Starkiller wasn't supposed to survive that last mission, huh? I do not expect you to survive. It's all right, bro. Vader can be a dickhead. We all know it. So after putting his apprentice in his fucking place, Vader tells him that it's time that he go after a true Jedi. Big Daddy Vader puts a hit on the former Jedi Council Master Shock T in Felucia. So Starkiller flies to Felucia to do what he does best, beat a Jedi to a pulp then watch him die. With the death of a true Jedi under his belt, Starkiller is commanded to come back to Vader's ship. They are now ready to jump cities in these intergalactic streets. So our boy strolls over to Vader's ship, hype as shit. But when Sidious shows up, Vader betrays Starkiller and stabs him in the back. Sensei Vader, why? Sidious' spies found out about Starkiller and followed him to Vader. So Sidious gets tight and is like, something, something, something betrayal. Something, something, something. Kill your fucking apprentice before I kill you both. So Vader kills the boy. Damn, son. But this was all part of Big Daddy Vader's master plan. It was all a ruse to make it look like Starkiller died. Now killing cities will be a lot easier, or should be. Spies are watching Vader's every move, 
so he tells Starkiller to assemble a freaking army to serve as a distraction to the Emperor. So first you kill me, then you tell me to just make an army? How? How, Vader? Please tell me how I, a Jedi murderer, will assemble an army against the Emperor. How, you bitch-ass sensei? After receiving his impossible task, he picks up his pal Proxy and his love interest Juno when they head out to form their rebel army, with Starkiller stating that he's leaving the Empire behind. They start the army assembly mission by going after Rom Koda and Nar Shadda, since Starkiller remembers him saying that he would be part of his future. After going on a wild goose chase for this man, Starkiller finds him in a bar on Vespin. Koda was blinded by Starkiller after their fight, so now he's a depressed drunk and no longer wishes to fight the good fight against the Empire. I mean, that sucks, but it makes Starkiller's life a lot easier with him trying to pose as a Jedi and all. Clone soldiers show up, and after taking care of them, Koda decides to join Starkiller, and sees that he has a contact in the Senate who could use their help. Under Koda's command, they fight at Starkiller's home planet, Kashyyyk. After seeing the ghost of his dead father, he finds Princess Leia, the person Koda wanted him to find. Starkiller puts two and two together and realizes that Koda's Senate contact is Leia's father. Knowing this, he goes back to Koda, demanding to talk with the dude. But apparently the dude is missing. He originally asked Koda to find his daughter, but after Koda refused, he went to go look for a Jedi Master in Felucia, the same one that Starkiller beat earlier. The idiot senator went MIA the moment he landed on the planet, so Starkiller and Koda decide to head to Felucia to rescue him. After landing on the planet and fighting Shakti's corrupted apprentice, he rescues Senator Organa. After the rescue, Koda, Starkiller, and the Senator convene to talk about how they're going to attack the Empire. They agree that they need to show the galaxy that the Empire is vulnerable, to inspire more people to join the rebellion. Starkiller then goes to speak with Big Daddy Vader to figure out what he should do. Then Vader tells him that if they eliminate a bunch of Star Destroyers being built over Raxus Prime, that would definitely cause more people to join the rebellion. But Vader notices the conflict in his apprentice's heart. This boy went and got attached to his new friends, and he also probably realized how fucked up the Empire is. So Vader reminds the boy that he serves him. Don't forget who raised you, young blood. After the conversation, Starkiller gets caught by Juno. She realizes that he never left the Empire. He's still working for Vader, so she's obviously butthurt. But they ain't got time for that right now, so they head over to Rax's Prime and after a boss battle with freaking Proxy, because don't forget, this idiot's purpose in life is to kill Starkiller, and pulling out a Star Destroyer with the Force, Starkiller completes the mission. Okay, wait, wait. I don't think y'all truly understand how impressive this feat is. My man used the Force to pull down a freaking Star Destroyer. D do you know how big that is? An Imperial class Star Destroyer, which is what Starkiller pulled down if I'm not mistaken, is 1600 meters long and is able to hold over 30,000 people. 30K, that's a lot of freaking people. And this man pulled this shit down by himself. My man is broken, broken. Tell me he's not. Sometime after the destruction of the Star Destroyers, Starkiller meets up with Koda and the rest of the newly formed rebellion. But then Vader rolls up to the rebellion meeting with his squad and attacks the place. Starkiller's like, Bro, what about my mission though? What about taking down Sidious? Then Vader's like, you dumbass apprentice. I never planned to overthrow my master with you. I killed your daddy in front of you and you thought following me was gonna give you a happy ending? I'm evil, bitch. Betrayal's in my blood. Luckily, before Vader is able to deal the final blow, Proxy distracts him long enough for Starkiller to escape. But Proxy gets taken down in the process and the rebels get captured by Vader and his forces. Feeling completely and utterly used, Starkiller confides in Juno and they decide to hunt for Vader and the rebels. Our boy is now completely done with the dark side and the Empire. He abandons his codename and goes back to his birth name, Galen. Then after using Force Future Sight to find out that the Rebels are being imprisoned inside the Death Star, and finally sharing a kiss with Juno, he heads out to save his comrades as a fully realized Jedi. Sidious realizes that Galen is in his ship. He's like, well, can't have that. Then sends Vader to handle the boy. Then Galen and his former master meet, and immediately prepare for the smoke that's about to go down. I've been waiting to whoop your ass, dad killer. After a long battle, the apprentice defeats his master, but then Sidious switches up on Vader and encourages Galen to kill the dude because he's weak. What the fuck, man? Now aware that this is the same confused boy who tried to kill him a while ago, Coda tries to stop Galen before he does something drastic and falls back to the dark side. But Sidious electrocutes him with force lightning. In order to save his new comrade, he challenges Darth Sidious and wins, actually. Then flip floppy ass Sidious tries to get Galen to give in to his hatred and kill him, stating that it's his destiny to end him. This bitch is an anime villain and a half. Yo, can you stop trying to compare Star Wars to anime? But bro, look at the facts. Galen's backstory, his relationship with Vader, this, Star Wars could dead be an anime. No one is gonna make a Star Wars anime. Says you, Disney has the money. So Sidious is out here trying to switch Galen to the dark side, but our boy is better now. So he refuses to give him to the dark side and kill the Sith Lord. He tells Coda and the rest of the rebels to board his ship so they can leave, but Sidious strikes Coda in retaliation. Galen holds off Sidious to give the rebels enough time to escape. Then as a goodbye to his friends and a middle finger to the empire, he releases all of his pent up energy into one huge Majin Vegeta explosion. 
Unfortunately, like Vegeta's final explosion, it fails to put down the enemy, but kills the user. But both Sidious and Vader are pretty freaking pissed about the whole situation. I mean, think about it. Sidious just lost probably the most powerful apprentice he's ever seen. And Big Daddy Vader was out here talking shit and underestimating Galen, but now thanks to him and his apprentice, a rebellion started. Fuck ups all across the board. So Vader promises to eliminate these rebels for his master. Later, the rebels convene and agree to use the Merrick family crest as a symbol of the officially formed Rebel Alliance. And thus the fight for galactic freedom against the Empire begins. Moving back to Vader, the anime sensei takes the body of Galen and spends the next few months trying to create the perfect clone to help him overthrow Sidious. Again. Vader, did you not learn your lesson the last time? Well, I mean, Sidious did make it clear that he's down to replace him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So for a while, Vader goes through multiple failed clones. Either they would come out disfigured or they'd get way too attached to Galen's emotions and freak out. After plenty of flawed attempts, Vader finally sees signs of progress in the Force Unleashed 2 with Subject 1138. Okay, so from now on, I'll refer to the clone as Starkiller and the actual Starkiller as Galen, so there's no confusion. Training is going well with the new and improved Starkiller, up until a training simulation where one of the droids turns into Juno. Starkiller gets too emotional to kill the girl, who technically isn't his girl because he's a clone, but I guess it's still kind of his girl, so Vader strikes her down because he's a dick. So he tells Starkiller about how the clones before him went bad so he had to throw them away, and it's looking like this clone has to get thrown away too. Then after a flashback to Galen's past where Vader stabbed him, Starkiller strikes Vader down, remembering that this is the asshole sensei who lied to him for all time. Starkiller then escapes, because the game just started, and he ain't ready for the dark side smoke. He's off to look for Juno since that's the one memory that seems to make him feel whole. To find the girl he first seeks Rom Koda, Galen's old friend. Turns out the poor guy got himself trapped in the Tarkosei arena and has been fighting enemies for seven days straight. So young Starkiller saves the Jedi and they escape on Galen's old ship, the Rogue Shadow. The clone starts asking for his girl almost immediately. Koda explains that he has no idea where Juno is because the Rebel Alliance is now scattered across the galaxy, basically running away from Vader before he finds them and mercs them. But says that with Starkiller back, they can plan a big strike against the Empire, to which Starkiller responds with a, nah bro, I'm not your boy, I'm just a clone looking for some cheeks. Koda is perplexed because he knows he's not crazy. He may be blind, but the Force be knowing. However, Starkiller continues to deny that he is Galen, he just wants to find his girl right now. So Koda gets tight and starts yelling at him about how he's putting holes before the galaxy and tells him to drop him off ASAP since he's acting different. I just want to find my girl, bro. While all this is going on, it turns out that Vader is hunting for his failed clone, even going to the famous bounty hunter Boba Fett for help. My man is really trying to put this boy down. Going back to Starkiller, after going through many planets in order to find his girl Juno, he lands on the swampy planet Dagobah. There he meets Yoda, the legendary Jedi Master. Galaxy Master Roshi tells the clone that he will find what he seeks inside the cave. Starkiller trusts a random stranger and proceeds. After getting visions of possibly failed versions of himself, he gets another vision of Juno getting attacked on her ship. He exits the cave and Yoda tells him that he must follow what he saw. So he picks up Koda since his head is now on a little straighter, and they head to Nordra to convene with the rebel fleet and Juno. On the way, Starkiller is still showing doubts about who he is, but Koda reassures him by telling him that being a clone doesn't matter. You are who you want to be, bro. But Starkiller's vision starts coming to life as the ship they're on gets attacked by Imperials. They rush to rescue Juno, but end up finding Proxy. Turns out the Rebel Alliance rescued him after Galen gave his life to protect them. Proxy tells them that the Imperials most likely took Juno. After searching all over the ship, he finally finds Juno being taken by Boba Fett, but they escape before he can get to him. In rage, the clone tells Koda that they, including the Rebel Alliance, need to go save her, and if they're not down, then he'll go by himself. Koda agrees, and with the Rebel Alliance now behind him, Starkiller heads for the place where he was created, Kamino, to strike the Empire. But Big Daddy Vader was obviously waiting for this. I mean, come on, he took Juno alive. If this isn't a trap, I don't know what is. Starkiller and the Rebel Alliance then engage with the Empire in an all-out war on Kamino, but the Empire's increasing numbers are overwhelming for them. So they conduct a Hail Mary play and use their main ship as a missile to strike the Kamino base and land on the planet. However, while all this is going on, Koda is begging Starkiller to help out with the actual Rebel attack. Cause you see, Starkiller is still just here for Juno, while Koda and the Rebel Alliance are mainly here to attack the Empire. Starkiller Killer has his mind set on rescuing Juno though, and eventually finds out that Vader has her. Traversing throughout the base, Starkiller finds out that Vader is trying to clone an army of him, thousands of mindless force-sensitive clones who are only there to serve the Empire. That's just... Damn, Vader, the fuck is your problem? So after more traveling through the base and ignoring Koda's pleas for help, he confronts Vader alone. They engage in a lightsaber Agni Kai, but Vader dips only for Starkiller to chase after him. Give me my woman, you little bitch! He confronts him once again, and Vader finally reveals Juno, but immediately starts force choking her then tells Starkiller to bow before him. The clone concedes and says that he'll do his bidding. Then Vader tells him that he has to go and kill Coda. Then he has to give himself to the dark side. 
Beatty's gonna have to hunt down and execute the rebel leaders. If he refuses, then the woman dies. You got a lot of demands, my nigga. Then Juno tries defending her boy with his lightsaber, but then Vader's like, y'all must have really forgot who I am. I'm evil, bitch. Then Force pushes her out the window. Starkiller rages the hell out and engages Vader again. Using the anime power up you gain from losing your shit, Starkiller manages to defeat Vader. He gets ready to murk this dude. Makoto comes just in time to stop him. They can keep him as a prisoner and have him tried for his action against the true Republic, the Galactic Republic. And killing him will probably just throw Starkiller to the dark side. So Starkiller spares him and runs to check on his woman. Turns out she's alive, yay. They share a long overdue kiss. Starkiller jizzes a little, then they prepare to take Darth Vader to a prison that can hold him. Then on the ship, Starkiller confronts Vader and officially renounces him as his master, telling him that he has finally overcome the hold he has on him. Then just as he's about to leave the room, Vader retorts with, As long as she lives, I will always control you. Wait, so was Vader just being a dick or is Juno either A, a spy or B, being tracked? Unfortunately, the game never answers that, so yeah. Y'all leave your theories in the comments. As for me, I think Juno may be a sleeper agent that Vader's waiting to activate. The Starkiller and Juno take Vader to his designated prison, but Boba Fett's ship follows them. Does he ever cast him? I'm not sure. What I do know is that Vader does not stay in prison for long. He actually escapes later on, but don't worry, he eventually gets taken down and the New Republic is formed. So the good guys do eventually win. However, that's going into deep Star Wars lore and we don't do that here. But yeah, that's the story of Galen Merrick and his clone. Pretty weird way to end a story now that you think about it. Yeah, for real, like you can't just show Boba Fett chasing after them then not make a sequel. Like the fuck? Well, it doesn't matter anymore since everything in the expanded universe is no longer canon. Thanks a lot, Disney. Oh yeah. So Starkiller doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, Disney Thanos snapped him away. Wow, so this video is- No longer canon, yes. Huh, I now fully understand why some OG Star Wars fans are mad at Disney. See, it sucks, right? What's going on, Doji fam? Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History. Once again, I feel like I'm, I'm a broken record at this point, but I am sorry for having this video come out so late. Work got busy as usual, life got busy, and yeah, but hey, it's out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I put my all into it and all that good stuff. First off, I hope you guys are staying healthy. Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are staying inside, playing video games, watching anime, watching movies, all that good stuff. Don't go outside, don't get sick, don't catch anything. Second off, if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like and share with all your friends. Comment who else you wanna see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. And yeah, that's it. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, take care. And remember, you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. All it takes is time and practice. And stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't go outside. Keep your ass inside. Yeah. All right. Peace.